Hey everyone, as promised, in a comment and in that heinously mistitled build guide I posted in the Grim Dawn forums, I'm going to be doing an itemization guide for the Aether Ray build in build 25. Um, this isn't going to be a skills demo, um, I'm not going into the field because I've done a lot of videos this week that are basically the Aether Ray guy just going out in the field and, and burning enemies to the ground burning enemies to nothing with the the ray and Calder's Tempest and Devastation. So I'm really going to try to shoot for a 10 minute video on this, but we're probably going to go over. And it's just going to be me just poking at all the items that I think are, are worth looking at, or worth attempting to get for this particular build. So we're going to start with the weapons, and there are two. Um, the Blackwood Wand is a random world drop, and I would suggest this as your sort of starter Aether weapon. It's, it's a really just solid epic caster weapon. It has flat aether damage as its own damage, and then an additional flat aether damage on top of it. It has bonus spirit, plus one to all occultist skills, and plus one to all arcana skills. Now, obviously, I'm not multi-classing this guy, so the plus one to all occultist skills is wasted, but plus one to all arcana skills is really solid, both for your for getting the ray built up and just in general for all of your all of your other skills. I obviously don't really need to explain it, but um, there it is. The component is going to be a Wrath Stone, and that's the component for both weapons. I tried to shoot it for a completion bonus to fire, which I have right here. And then this one has physical damage, which is eh, whatever. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd shoot for fire damage or vitality damage on the component. The other weapon, which you can get from Devil's Crossing's uh, Quartermaster... Um, faction quartermaster at honored level is Devil's Bargain. Now this is physical damage as its base damage, so not as good there, but it does have flat aether damage and percent aether damage on top of it. And the percent aether damage, I actually have been finding it um, a little better because it adds the percent onto the whatever the aether damage of the beam is, it gets that percent on top of like adding its own flat aether damage into your normal aether damage um, that you have in your in your sheet DPS. It also, for me, has more spirit, which helps with um, maintaining the beam, and it actually gives, you, gives it more damage because you get bonus magic damage per spirit. And most importantly, it has casting speed. And casting speed is important for both the speed at which you cast the beam, the speed that you can turn the beam, it's damage because casting speed is integrated into the beam now and it helps with the casting speed of Kalidor's Tempest. So both of these weapons are probably your your best in slot currently for Aether weapons. Um, there's a weapon in the Black Legion Quartermaster at Revered that's probably going to be really good as well. But for now, um, and probably better than either of these. But for now that's the weapons. For your offhand, there are four. <laughs> The, the first and most obvious is Crushing Will, and I think this is probably your, your basic Arcanist offhand item, um, mostly because of its absurd casting speed it can get, and mine is a 22, which makes Kalidor's Tempest really fast and makes getting the beam out and turning it really fast. Everything else on it is just like perfectly oriented to a caster. There's also Dementia, which has everything except the casting speed. It has a lot of percent aether damage and a lot of energy and I think it, it does it have more energy regen? Uh, energy regen is about the same. Um, plus two to arcane will is only okay and terror is only okay but it does have a lot of flat aether damage and will give you a lot of energy so it is worth a look if you don't really care about your casting speed as much. The third option is Myvin's Tome and I'm going to mention here that the three piece Myvin set is a legitimate way to start in this and I was actually using it for a while because you'll get you get a lot out of this including all of the these bonuses on Myvin's tome you'll get 20 percent aether damage across the three pieces um, and you get a lot of extra little things thrown in there that are really helpful for you as a caster character but for me personally I prefer the three items I have these three items I have right now and I'll get to the the other two in a moment but Myvin's Tome is definitely worth a look. Um, 
it is recommended. So, um, the fourth one comes from this guy under Honored, and that is the Death's Ruin offhand, which I may switch to. I don't know yet. Um, I prefer books over skulls, aesthetically speaking, but uh, it has flat aether damage, crit damage, a lot of bonus aether damage, and a good chunk of energy, and a good chunk of energy regen. So it may actually be the thing I switch to. And it's another proc of Arcane Blast. Um, so we'll see in the future. Um, I'm debating it. And that actually may may warrant me switching back to this because of the huge percent aether damage on that. But we shall see. Um, next up is the chest piece and pants. <clears throat> and I'm covering these at the same time because they're both open slots. You can re Oh wait, components. Um, Components I recommend, um, Blessed Steel is really solid, because it's elemental damage and offensive ability, and you can roll it with Aether damage, and I just happen to have one with Aether damage. Haunted Steel is another option. It provides, well, Blood Drinker plus two isn't that great, but it provides vitality damage, which the Beam's um, modifier disintegration has, and you can build it up. And then the other one is Radiant Gem, which gives you Radiant Shield, which is a handy defensive ability. But really the component on the offhand is open. Um, unlike the weapon work, it's pretty much just Wrath Soul. Now the chest piece um, and the pants are open. You can pretty much use anything you want in here. I highly recommend getting a chest piece that has a whole lot of regen. Because a whole lot of regen is important to this build. I have 102 right now. Wait, did these provide any? Um, okay, I have I have 99 right now, and uh, having about a hundred-ish regen, like 80 to 100, is pretty pretty required for this build, and that's why a chest piece that has flat regen and percent regen is important. Your pants, oh, and and for the component, I would suggest Chains of Olaren or Hallowed Ground, either one with plus two all skills and Arcanist. Um, I went with the chains because of the offensive ability. Uh, the reduced armor is pretty much icing on the cake. Physical damage is whatever. I mean, it does it does work with that weapon to add the weapon damage into Calidor's Tempest and the beam. But yeah, it's it's mostly for that that tiny bit of offensive ability, which does really actually matter. My pants are Hermit's Leg Guards, but you can really go with any pants, um, crafted or epic. It's pretty much an open slot. You could go with something that... I think there are fire aether pants that you could probably craft up. Um, but whatever whatever floats your boat there. You could even go with explorer's trousers and explorer's boots if you want the movement speed. But the component is in an ancient armor plate. And I think that's the standard component for pants. It's total damage, physique, armor, and armor percent. And then I have one with energy regen. And I actually think that's that's just as important. And I, I would highly suggest just keep making these until you get... I'd, I'd actually say plus... Uh, percent energy or energy regen on the other side shoulders um mantle of the weeping eye i think is pretty much your basic your basic shoulder for this because of the 30 percent aether damage i think something crafted could potentially be better but uh it would have to be extremely specific like something like aether fire shoulders of of the flesh hulk it, it would have to be extremely good and extremely specific um otherwise uh, this has everything else you'd want for a casting shoulder piece because of the spirit and offensive ability and energy regen. Also, the plus two to Iskandras from this and the plus one from this can actually get your Iskandras elemental exchange to plus seven. Um, and I think it would go up to plus eight with the Blackwood Wand. So it's a really, uh, it is a really, um, good combination of things here to get Iskandras elemental exchange built way up with only investing one point in it. The component I'm using is mutated scales, and I can't really think of any other component you'd want to use here. But uh, I would probably consider it open, but mutated scales is recommended. It's a good chunk of health. For gloves, there are two gloves to go with. The first is a random world drop called Inscribed Bracers. And you'll see these on a lot of Arcanists, even if they aren't using Kalidor's Tempest, because of that. It, it's, it's elemental damage and casting speed. Um, skill disruption protection is handy. And then plus two to Calidor's Tempest is really nice as well. I'm just using these because of the total damage would apply just to all of my damage instead of just the elemental damage. 
Um, it also has equivalent casting speed. Um, it doesn't have plus two to Kaladur's Tempest, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm also really trying these out because um, there's something different. They're definitely a different glove in terms of appearance and, and like standardization of use. <laughs> so, uh, components for the gloves. Um, Restless Arrains is energy and casting speed and some retaliation. Um, retaliation for health reduction. Unholy Inscription is bonus vitality damage and cunning and some resistances. And you can obviously roll Aether damage on that. Uh, Spellwoven Threads are another one. Um, they were sort of toned down, but they're also a good option for your hand armor. And I think that's it for hand armor components. I don't think there's another one. But boots, <clears throat> moving on to boots, um, they're another open slot. I would suggest going with something that really you could go with anything here. I'm using it to sort of shore up my cunning and uh, the components either Mark of Mark of the Traveler or Mark of Mogdragon, and they basically do the same thing. I think the Mark of Mogdragon has percent health on it, in addition to health regen and movement speed. Um, but I'm using these to sort of shore up my stats a little bit, so I can equip that and equip my belt, which I'm using as Harmonious Death's Cord. Death's Cord is a uh, is the faction blueprint. One of the faction blueprints for Order of Death's Vigil. Oh, and I should note, I'm Order of Death's Vigil. I definitely recommend Order of Death, Death's Vigil for casters right now, um, especially if you're sort of if you're if you're an Arcanist or an Occultist, I would definitely consider going with it over Kaiman's Chosen. But yeah, the belt it provides elemental damage, um, elemental damage, offensive ability, a lot of offensive ability for a belt. Um, and slow resistance, and plus one to my Sphere of Protection, and this Aether Ward ability. Which I haven't seen, I haven't really used it a lot actually. Um, I just put it on the other day, so I'm probably going to go in the field and use it a little bit to try it out. But, uh, yeah, if you if you get the right roll on there, you can actually get, um, you can get a lot going for it. For me, um, it's a lot of elemental damage, percent health, percent energy, a good chunk of offensive ability, um, energy regen, elemental resistance, slow resistance, and plus one to my Sphere of protection. If you're using your, if you have Duncan, the arcane blacksmith, he does add, I think it's like, it's either elemental damage, energy regen, or elemental resistance to the things he crafts. So, um, that actually combos really well with the belt to give you a good chunk of bonus damage and stuff. The other is Frizzix Utility Belt Pack. Frizzix Utility Pack. Um, and this is just a really good belt all around. The it's, it's total damage, it's offensive and defensive ability, and it's health and energy regen. And if I were to slap that on, um, my my energy regen would probably... It, it would jump up to a good, like, 120, I think. But um, I'm not actually going to slap that on because my physique would drop to 100 and, or 340... And I'd be four points short of the belt, the other belt. So it's like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just not gonna futz with my equipment right now. For the metal, I think it's really an open slot. Oh, um, components here, um, use whatever. Uh, I would, I would suggest the the things like um, molten skin, or uh, I think it's is it scavenged plating? Yeah, scavenged plating, or anti venom salve. Just use the things that go on all armor pieces to shore up resistances. And, um, I'm actually using it to short my physique, too. So, your metal can really be anything, but I'm going with the combat medics mark. Mostly because of the field medicine, um, ability. Which is great for mitigating a lot of health potion, potion usage. Because you'll get a, like, 300 health is maybe, like, what, that? 300 plus... 5%, okay, 5% 5 plus 300 health restored. So to restore a chunk of health, um, and it gives you a lot of health regen when it procs. It also, incidentally, if you're fighting with another ranged person, um, or just next to another person, they'll get a little heal as well, but, um, I see this proc a lot. It'll be like a red icon right there, and it's like, great, 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 great for mitigating health potion usage, which is great for a caster. I mean, that's probably why I have 350 health potions, just floating around now. Um, 
its other stats are really solid. Um, bonus physique is great for me because it helps just shore up my physique. Um, it, uh, energy and health regen are just great, and then having a good chunk of bleed resistance is quite handy. The shield block, shield damage blocked. I I'm not using a shield, so obviously that's that's wasted. But whatever, it has other good stuff going for it. I'm using an Aether Soul as a component, and I used to have two of these back when they had energy regen, but now I'm just using the one. Um, it can give you some bonus resistance as well, but yeah, it's mostly for that 10% Aether damage. Um, next up is the helmet, and there's pretty much one helmet, and it's the Nether Crown. It's Aether damage, and Elemental damage, and Energy regen, and plus one to all Arcana skills. It's basically got everything, everything in the right place, even though the numbers are kind of low. And I think going forward, I'm probably going to craft a helmet and see if I can't get something better, even though I lose the plus one to all Arcana skills. Um, I also I also think it's really, really ugly, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> um, I would also recommend using like your Molten Skin, Scavenge Plating, Anti-Venom Solves here to shore up, shore up resistances. I'm using another Anti-Venom Solve, not because I'm particularly afraid of poison resistance or poisons and acids, but um, it had phys the physique and cunning both built up. Now for the bling, we've got um, there are a couple options here. the The main one you want to go for is Aetherlord Signet because it's everything you could want in a ring with plus two to Albrecht's Aether Ray on top of it. It's got a proc of Arcane Blast. It's got the Aether damage. It's got Spirit. It's got health and energy and Aether Res, and it's all around just great. Um, Throw a Mark of Illusions in there, and then, um, and and you've got like the perfect ring. The other ring I'm using is I'm not I do have a second Aetherlord Signet, but I'm using Devil's Wrath Seal right now because of its Aether damage and energy regen and casting speed, um, with another Mark of Illusions. Uh, you can get this in Devil's Crossing at Revered level, and um, for the the amulet. At Order of Death's Vigil, Revered Level, we get the Pendant of Ubiquitous Wrath, and this is so, so awesome. I I actually, when I saw that this guy popped up in town, and then um, I saw what he had in his, his stocks, I had to build. They're like, this is the entire reason I was doing this. I, I just had to farm Aetherials, um, and I farmed Aetherials like, like no one's business. So, uh, to get this damn just this damn amulet because it's just so awesome it's aether damage and energy and a huge chunk of offensive ability cooldown reduction absorption plus two to albrecht's aether ray i threw an arcane lens in there mostly for the skill energy cost reduction um and i needed a little bit of cunning and uh yeah it's just a really really great amulet um this is why i i, I say this three this three piece is better than my vins right now because of that oh and um lore keepers band deserves a mention because inner focus and casting speed and a lot of energy regen and or energy and energy regen i should say and elemental damage it's just a solid like generalist caster ring and inner focus is not bad to have built up because that's that's bonus crit chance essentially and and um and bonus energy which is in fact bonus bonus damage for you and bonus regen and just bonus energy so last thing I'll mention are the augments, and right now in my weapon and offhand, I'm using the uh, from Homestead's Revered level. I don't remember what they're called, but it's the one that gives physique, because I need my physique built up mostly to wear this damn belt. But uh, yeah, I needed the physique built up. The stun duration, I don't think I have anything that actually stuns right now. Um, and bonus armor is always always handy. Oh crap, uh, Hunt is your relic. Pretty much the only relic you're ever going to want. It's plus, it, It's got all the right damages. And it does have plus one to all Arcana skills. Get one that's either plus two to Albrecht's Aether Ray, Iskander's Elemental Exchange, Kalidor's Tempest. I think Devastation can have it. Um, though I don't think I've ever rolled... I don't think I rolled one with it. Um, I don't actually use the Haunt ability that much. Because um, I, I just don't... I, I usually have everything dead before it ever gets really going. But anyways, um, components, yeah, the, uh, that one from, from over there, in both, uh, in both, uh, weapon and offhand. And then I've got, um, Ouroboruk's Path 1 in 
my rings amulets my rings and my amulet because it's awesome it's flat aether it's, it's just percent aether damage a crap ton of energy and then a crap ton of energy regen so that is all of the items i am presently using and i find presently good with um with the aether ray build i mean that's twice as much time as i wanted to spend on this but whatever uh thanks for watching everyone this is probably gonna be the last like aether guide aether ray guide i do for a while um mostly because i can't think of anything else to do for it so unless something new or exciting pops up um it'll be build 26 by the time next time i do um an aether ray guide and when build 26 comes out there's going to be a level cap increase i don't know if it's going to be five or ten but if it's five um i'll probably just shore up what's what's lacking here and do a guide on it if it's 10 i'll consider multi-classing into demolitionist um but but for the time being um yeah i'm gonna save doing another aether ray guide until then and it's gonna be a pretty i'm gonna try to make it a really definitive aether ray guide at that point so uh we'll cover that when whenever that happens probably you know late june or july so thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time